Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for After Church Tea Time. And today we are going to be going deeper in talking about what we received in today's sermon on healing uh, with your guru and really getting clear on what that looks like for everyone here. Uh, I'm Kanisha, and I'm going to let everyone else introduce themselves. Okay. Hi, and I'm Mala. Oh, oh. Hello, I'm Mala. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah, we are Eve and Lara, and yeah, we are happy to join you here. Wonderful. So healing with Guru, I really loved this topic because I think um, for a lot of people, a relationship with Guru is a very new like thought process and very new concept. And so what it really means to have a healthy relationship with Guru and the community, I really love that Chrissy and Jason were the ones who did this sermon because they have done in-depth healing around this and you can really see it in their union and how their and union expands. One of the things that are really important is they're on other relationships in my life and whether or not they really aligned with this work and if they were truly um, bringing me closer to God, which is what our gurus encourage us is to really go deeper into nurturing relationships that truly bring us closer to God. And for me, this has been something where I've really wanted to get to the core and really uproot any relationships that felt heavy and that seemed to really try to like take from my spiritual energy because that that requires a lot of work to maintain a high level of of spiritual uh, vibration and just the energy that we use in order to move throughout our day. And so for me, this was really profound to start to really ask myself, how does my relationship with Guru feel? How does my relationship with the community feel? How are you guys feeling about that? Um, I feel pretty good about that. I like that, um, like having a healthy relationship with Guru means that your life is uh, meant to be thriving. And if it's not, then that probably means there is, you know, well, not probably, there is like an upset with, you know, Guru because um the teachings are designed to you know make our life thrive so if it's not obviously there's blocks to work through and you know challenges are natural and normal and they come up um constantly to like uh sharpen you and strengthen you but yeah I guess another point that I really liked about the sermon was um when Chrissy started talking about like her life how it feels and how she's like very like blissed out and enjoy with her life purpose. And yeah, it's just really nice to like experience that energy. Like, um, like, oh, I want my life to feel like that. Like my life purpose to feel like that, you know? So yeah, that's, those are my thoughts. Yeah, we can share a lot of experiences with that too, um, in regards to blogs, to the community or to guru. Um, this is what we, I guess, since we are together, constantly are working on yeah. relate. What Chris said, it's a relationship block. And it makes totally sense that um, also, I guess, Jason was it, who was saying, um, if you have not like this fixed, you cannot have a good like experience with your twin flame. <laughs> and what we experienced that every time we heal through a block, through a relationship block or community or guru, that we have a better time together, that is instantly um, manifesting in our union, that we are more harmonious and more close to each other and yeah, vibe more in harmony and flowing together as one. So this is really beautiful. And this is what Jeff and Julia teach and what the way is and that this work is working. I feel like we are a very good example for exactly this healing and that this work is just working when, when you are doing it. and um consistently consistently doing it like chrissy said it's consistency is needed and um yeah being accountable she said that uh different times that you have the responsibility to to heal these things and you 
you are the only one who can do it and uh, change and have a better experience when you when you feel not close to the community, not close to Jeff and Shalia, or not are not thriving in your in on your ascension journey or in your life purpose. It's pretty much not possible if you're in the community and you're trying to have a relationship there, but you have an upset or a rejection against the guru, like you're using this work. So if you are not like using this for your life, it's not even going to work out. So you cannot have a really good experience. That's for example, it's really my ex was my experience where I had to heal a lot about it, that I can have a good experience with the community when I hold this upset within myself or this grudge against the community it's mostly not there directly to like also I, I i believe it was jason who said it's not directly with jeff and chalia it's with the organization where you do the volunteering or where you mm -hmm. like connect with the people if you there have an upset and you hold the grudge against them and you are not working through it and complaining that is all bad you are, cannot even come closer to them and as soon as you usually you work through your upsets you have a in instant manifestation of a result and that looks in a better relationship with the community and it works every time so it just needs the discipline to like to face our challenges we have and all of us have the challenges to move through but it shows in my experience every time if you move through it it's worth it because you you receive more love more from the community more joy more from your twin plan it's like in every area, it's working out. Yep. Yeah, what you're really touching on there, and this is something that is brought up to us a lot uh, through Jeff and Shalia, is that they are going to mirror back to us our core upsets. And like you said, when you worked through your upset around that, you saw a difference within your union alone. It wasn't just the upset being resolved between you and Guru, it was being resolved in every area of your life, especially with your twin flame. And that is something that I think a lot of people are working through is recognizing that our gurus and, and uh, the community are going to really um, shine light on the blocks that we have when it comes to family. Uh, for me, that's been a big one because uh, Chris, uh, Chris even touched on this with like her and Christina having to move through some things. There's almost like this sibling energy <laughs> that you got to move through that they um, will tend to highlight for you. I've noticed that quite a bit as I've been in the community for six years that sometimes when I have an upset with another brother or sister, it literally feels like an upset within the family that you're having to resolve. And when you do, the whole family um, receives from it. And so ultimately, they are shining light on those upsets that you have within your own biological family. And that is something that I've deeply had to heal with, uh, allowing myself to be vulnerable, allowing myself to be seen, um, allowing myself to connect with the community and really receive the love, the deep, deep love that Jeff and Shalia and the community has for us. Yeah. Yeah, this is very true for me too, because I, for myself, I have not liked the loving uh, experience in my family. And it is very mm -hmm. different to be in this community where um, everything is pointed out. When you come from a family where everyone is not talking about like the issue and just, yeah, just avoiding, it's it's really not love. And here it is like, this is, this is it. You have to clean this one. And it is sometimes very uncomfortable, but this is what the twin flame is also doing. And um, I guess it's very, it is very uncomfortable sometimes when when it is challenging or yeah fears come up but also very helpful and um the thing we desire when we want truly to heal because there is no around you have to face it because you want to be in this community and yeah you want to be with your twin flame so it is actually extremely compassionate and uh, very very supportive yeah to be close yeah. to the guru yeah yeah. Yeah, I really feel like that's what true love is to be ultimate is like those who truly love you will point out something that's uncomfortable because they don't want to see you suffer through that. They don't want to see you continue that pattern. And for me, I think it took me a very long time to recognize that I was being unconditionally loved and that it was actually safe when you come from a home or a space where there is just conditional love. 
And so you have to root out that belief that you're only worthy of conditional love. And in this community, it is truly unconditional love. It's truly true love. Yeah, we have this experience also like for us, it's going deeper because we have two kids that are also like are doing their inner work. Um, for them, this brought also a lot of healing in them when they are 12 and 15 years old, but they are like moving through their feelings and they have a lot of challenges, but it's bringing us as family even closer. So pointing up this upset we have about Guru helped us even as family coming closer and also them realizing exactly what you said about unconditional love that their biological father is not giving them the unconditional love they want for her life. So they had a lot to move through that, what you exactly said about their biological father. That's in my way, when I see it, he is even a little bit abusive to them, how they, he treats them. But for them, it's like a big challenge to move through, but they are also willing to go through it. And they receive from the other side more love from us because they are like, we reflect them their healing also like the community as us so we do as, as family as one yeah so it's also like that we're really healing this as a collective and yeah. yeah yeah this is really beautiful because it is like the community is something pointing out chrissy is saying this and then we hear this in in our union and then we we share it with the kids it's also the family and no one is like it separated it's one it's it's the one consciousness because even when the children are not like actively on facebook or volunteering they are part of this movement and they are doing the work and they are not separate from the guru and uh, they receive a lot through the teachings in in their childhood already yes yeah that's really beautiful yeah. it's very empowering for them yeah Yeah, um, something that Chrissy said in the sermon, she said, you either want a uh, control or God. And I was like, oh, that's powerful, right? Because mm -hmm. um, I guess like the core of kind of being stuck in a challenge or a block is because you prefer like the control of maybe not being seen or fear of like being vulnerable. But like at the end or at the other side of that challenge is like God and peace and you know, deeper closeness with like a uh, guru and community members and, you know, all that. So it's just worth it to work through the challenges that um, the community will bring up for you because like, like Kanisha was saying, like you really are unconditionally loved, like in this community and like coming from a place where that's not like the um, core vibe or whatever, it, it can be like challenging to like come in a place where like you are unconditionally loved and you're like, it's like, it's like foreign. You're like, oh, this is not safe. Like what's going on here? But then you get to the core and you're like, oh wait, I am unconditionally loved and I'm safe. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really touches on even like headed in the direction of the community of really focusing on healthy relationships, on romantic relationships and what that looks like. And I think a good part of society has spent a lot of time in abusive relationships. And so no one really talks about how uncomfortable it could be going from relationships that are not so loving into very loving relationships. And that comes a lot of self-sabotage if you don't have a community or a, a teacher or a mentor to really help you move through you seeing your pattern of like, no, this is healthy for you, but because you're not used to it, you're going to self-sabotage because you think that that's safer. You think you have control and power in the space. And, and the truth that is, that's the lie there. And so as you continue going deeper into this community, I find a lot of gratitude and a lot of relief that I'm able to work through at least <laughs> like half of my upsets through the community and the things that come up through my volunteer work instead of having to directly move through every single one of those things with my twin flame. A lot of it for the most part is resolved before even having a conversation with my twin flame and there's a lot of peace there. There's a lot of gratitude and uh, before really jumping into volunteer work and becoming um, more in depth into this community, I did have a belief that I could do by myself. There was this energy of like a lone wolf, like I will figure it out. I figured out my entire life. I know how to do this kind of thing. But it got to this place where God was just like, you're not meant to. I don't want that for you. I really desire for you to have all of the love and 
and brothers and sisters and and those that are here to support you and cheer you on instead of you trying to figure it by yourself just because you had to you don't have to do that anymore and that was very humbling that required a lot of uh safety that I had to build within myself to know that I was safe to uh, grow here. And there's been many times where I've thought like, oh my gosh, I'm going to, I'm going to be released. I'm going to be let go, but I was only loved. And they're like, no, let's just look at it. Let's go deeper here. And that was something that has also helped me become a better parent myself is how to communicate to that hurt inner child and instead of shutting them down or um, making them feel bad or judging them, it was like, no, this is how I'm going to love you. And you're safe here and it's safe to grow. It's safe to learn. And ultimately, that requires you being able to say yes to your guru, opening your heart to them, allowing them to purify your consciousness. It can feel uncomfortable at first, but the more that you continue surrendering to it and relaxing into it, uh, the more you just deeply receive and then you're able to give back. Yeah, and I feel this is really very close um, to the twin flame relationship because um, when you have like blocks or grudge towards Jeff and Shalia, um, you are also not really able to receive your twin flame as your personal guru. And we move through this also a lot that I do not listen to Eve. Eve is pointing something out to me for months and I'm not able to see it clearly or to listen. And then there must be uh, come. There, I, I must be sitting in a coaching session, and the coach is pointing it out. And then I have got it. And this is really something where I was used, or we both. It's the union uh, to be very stubborn. And it's the feeling, like you said, can you said the lonely wolf? Like I do it on my own, and um, where I shut off to relationships again, and not being able to to partner with someone, to receive someone, to receive guidance. Um, and this is what I feel the divine masculine is really supposed to do. He's like giving a lot to the divine feminine, but when she doesn't want to have it or to have a block to receiving it, it's really like not easy uh, for him to to give it to her, to point the things out, to, to love her ultimately. Yeah, so we move through this a lot. Stubbornness, doing it alone. Um, yeah, not teamwork. Yeah, and that's like what was pointing out with the block um, with the guru, yeah. and you're trying to do it alone, mm -hmm. even if um, it's pretty much clear or shown that um, the guru have laid the way for us, that's easier to relax into the teachings from our guru instead of trying to do it your way. Because if you're trying to do it your way, that was our experience or also mine. If you're trying to do it your way, you will not... Um, get any results with the community like you can do it your way but you will not succeed because um if you're in the community you're following ultimately god yeah. and if you're following god and the community only follows god you cannot have a good result there yeah it it, it do, you, do you just miss something this is like a big part of being with god is being in relationship yeah do it together and not alone not separate yeah Uh, yeah, I also relate to the lone wolf um, thing. Like, I've definitely tried to, like, move through, like, uh, my biggest challenges or scariest blocks, whatever, like, alone. I'm like, no, no, I'm I'm, I'm just going to do this alone. And it just keeps you in circles. And you're just, like, you kind of feel like you're kind of going crazy. You're like, oh, my God, like, this is, like, terrible. But then, uh, obviously, like, you finally surrender. And you're like, no, I can't take this, like, pain anymore. So you claim your support. And then once you, like, really, like, open up up and are vulnerable you're able to be like oh that wasn't that big of a deal I guess because you're able to kind of see it clearly right because you're not trying to like figure it out in like your head so yeah that was a big lesson for me like it's never as bad as you think you know because you're just healing you're, you're on the ascension path so you're going to be like pushed to your limit you know so and you'll heal and you'll grow from all the challenges and yeah and then you'll grow closer to uh, guru the community and yeah like your twin flame and then yeah they can like join you in the work right because you have like a harmonious relationship with the community so it'll be easier for them to um join you in um in doing the inner healing work so yeah yeah and i think for a lot of people um 
they are probably curious on how do you build that relationship with Guru? And for me, it was really embracing the body of work that they created for us and really starting to take it on as a way of life. Um, one of the things I had really struggled with at the beginning of my journey was uh, what we would call like hiding in the twin flame closet, hiding in the spiritual closet. Like I would be living one life, but everyone else got to see this other side of my life that was very surface level. It was almost like a mask of really keeping myself protected and not quite sharing with everyone what I was doing. And that felt really bad because it did feel like I was hiding a very crucial part of my life. Um, now I'm at this point where it doesn't phase me, but it did require a lot of inner work and it required, required having to really trust my gurus here and trust that the work that they were sharing and the work that they were embodying and living was really in a, alignment for what I desired. And ultimately it came down to having to go to God and asking God, like, is this really the path you desire me to take? Is this the, the ascension part that you want me to move through? And he always continued leading me back to Jeff and Shalia, leading me back to, to the community. Um, one of my favorite things about the body of work is no matter what upset you're moving through financially, um, with your twin flame or with family, whatever it is, you can find something within this body of work that's going to help you move through that upset. And to me, that is like, I don't know, I don't even know how to put it in words, but it's just so much love and support that at this moment in time in my journey, I would be insane not to receive it. <laughs> That's just how I feel. I would, I would literally be choosing hell instead of my heaven on earth to not receive the amount of love that's been poured into this body of work and to uh, just just take it day by day. They don't ask us to move through all the classes in a, a certain period of time. They really invite us to take it at your pace, allow yourself to receive it as much as you can and continue moving through the process. You have to move through upheaval. You have to move through all of the things, but to really just give yourself permission to take the journey and watch how it unfolds and changes your life. And I think there are so many people in the community now who have had massive amazing breakthroughs and continue just by continuing what we like to say, chop wood, carry water, continuing doing the mirror exercise, feeling through your feelings, moving through whatever block comes up. And ultimately, um, Chrissy talked about this too, is that like, no one's going to come save you. No one can do this for you. You have to take full responsibility and make a choice to want that for your life, to want your heaven on earth with your ultimate lover, with God. And you can have that. That's what I love about this work is that it is guaranteed. I remember hearing that at first, like it's guaranteed. And I'm like, uh -huh, right, show me. And now I'm just like, it's guaranteed. <laughs> like, just do it. I promise it's guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, we experienced this uh, uh, too. It's guaranteed. And something with the trust, um, what I personally move through a lot, um, when, when you said like, I have to liber I had to liberate myself here to like speak freely, live one life, not two lives. Yeah. Um, I see that in the, in the German consciousness, because I'm from Germany. I live in Switzerland now with Eve, but I am German, um, that we have like this, this big, big mistrust in the consciousness, um, in regards to guidance, to to how do you say that? A guide, someone who guides you. In, okay. I mean, it's guru, but um, this is because of the history with with the Germans, because they um, have this big 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 mistrust uh, with yeah. the World War, and uh, they are so um, still in trauma here. Like it's it's unconscious, but it is so deeply in the consciousness that we have really like a hard time to follow, to build trust, to it's like, I feel very slow that we, um, as a consciousness, as a collective, it's just move like forward. What Laura's trying to say, um, trust is a big, it's for humanity, trust is a um, big topic where a lot of people are hurt just because yeah. of what, we have so much pain going on in our history, like that's going for decades. Yep. And the German, what she's trying to say is just, it's even deeper for the Germans, but we have this 
as humanity, we are one, but the Germans are just here a role model. Yeah, it, it is because I have a lot of German clients as yeah. a coach. And so I work like constantly to this trust issues and build trust and build trust. And like, this is uh, where the control is um, coming from, from, coming from a lack exactly. of trust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So they believe a lot of people believe that they have to control like also Jeff and Charlie or the guru because they cannot trust. But as soon as you move through this trust issues, like we also had to move a lot through that because yep. we cannot separate, our, separate ourselves from the German consciousness because we yep. are one with them. And as soon as we also move through that, we can build more trust. And then we are like going one step ahead of them and trying to guide them. And yeah, that's just... how it works. That's how Jeff are doing it, is doing it like a school for us. So we are partnering here like with... Yeah, we are just like taking, I guess, taking the role seriously to see the upset, move through it, and then like take everyone with us and building building this trust. I mean, it is something everyone has to choose. And I guess Chrissy also said that in the in the sermon, um, that everyone has a choice and everyone needs to choose it. No one can carry you or no one can make the choice for you. It is really like your choice and you have to do the work. And it is a lot of work, but everyone has this choice to do to put in this work, and then it is guaranteed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. What's coming up for me is, um, in the sermon they were talking about whenever like a block comes up, instead of like shying away from it, and then just like um, kind of harboring resentment, it's important to like just uh, just deal with it, like face on and just be like okay let's look at this you know and something I'm working through is like um like feeling this like you know uncomfortable feeling and then uh kind of like knowing that like my mind is trying to say it's something else but like when you go deeper you're like oh it's actually something else it's not what your thoughts are trying to tell you it is so just like yeah going deeper into that feeling so that's important also where you would claim support where you where you don't have clarity you're like okay I know there's something deeper here but I can't really see so yeah I feel like that's definitely important and yeah I guess also what's coming up for me is like a relationship with a guru because um I guess like um I feel like there's only like a um the only culture that kind of has like a guru student relationship what I, I guess would be like the Indian culture or more eastern cultures over there mm -hmm. like over here in the west and um there's not really that relationship like you're it's kind of foreign you know and uh, yeah I guess yeah it also does have to do with like cultural healing around leaders and stuff I guess because I feel like I guess for my culture it's kind of like we are like desiring like a leader I guess but there's so much like um I guess this organization that I don't know it just feels like we are like desiring that leader obviously so the guru is that spiritual leader for us you know so yeah one of the things that I've noticed about when we do work through this body of work with a community it's like when one student is moving through a really big block it tends to be that all students are moving through the same block. It might look a little different on the outside, but the core of it is moving through the entire student body. And so one of the things I really appreciate is that Jeff and Shalia have created a community that there is safety in being able to share what you're moving through. There's safety in being able to um, vulnerably and authentically talk about the block that you're moving through and it really does humble you and it, it requires a lot of humility i know that um, jose and michaela touched on this in the intro about having to move through a specific block and when they share it with the community there's always this level of, like this deep level of relief that comes up that's like oh someone touched on it someone brought this up so that we can really start opening up in that space and really pouring love in there and healing as a family, healing as a collective. And uh, that's not something you will find in other places. Most of the time they 
um, the person who's moving through the block will move through a lot of shame or guilt or judgment. And there's this belief that coming back to a lone wolf, I'm the only one moving through this. So I might as well keep my mouth shut kind of energy. But in truth, when you share it with the community, you help them start to relieve that belief and start to really choose love in that space. And that is something that I'm 100% grateful for and that I, I claim in my heart for all of my brothers and sisters to be able to have something like that because it really does uh, allow you to start to have a life that you love. When Chrissy says that she loved her life, I 100% resonated with that. That was something that has really shifted for me in the last year of having really healthy boundaries and uh, creating boundaries with those who uh, weren't choosing to align with their highest good, didn't want to have a relationship with God or love. And uh, I just had to make a choice to set boundaries there. And when I did, I had all this energy and love and abundance come in. And now I like wake up and I'm like, what are we doing today? Like, I, I do love my life, but that was not something that I thought was possible at some point. Um, even the first few years of this work, I was like, yeah, the mirror exercise works and I'm seeing things. But like when you truly embody the work, you will see every crevice of your life shift and change. And it also uh, shifts and change for those who are around you, especially your children, especially those who are living in the home with you. It impacts all of them, just like... Um, they were talking about with their kids like it really truly does shift the consciousness and it may feel like it's not making an impact but it makes such a big impact when just one of us in the family makes a choice to take on this work and you naturally invite them into it. and if they don't choose it that's okay that's all right like that's not on you it's not your responsibility for them to have to choose it but it is your responsibility to embody it to share it and to share this love with others Yeah, and hear exactly um, how it feels like you're planting just seeds for the other when you say it like this. Um, if you embody the work, other people see what you are doing. They are not blind. Like they, even if they do not follow the work, they see what you're doing. They see your change. They are like they can see that. They're just not like really going into it. But that is what makes it like for them to come someday to the choice to make to follow this work and embodying it for their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And what you also shared is about boundaries, like what Chrissy did, or also it's Jeff and Shalia with like pointing this guru upset out. It's also just a boundary because it's going on for so such a long time in the community with this upset about the guru and this grudge, this resentment. That's just a boundary for the whole community that you have to move through it because we cannot take this upset any further because yeah. it's unhealthy for the whole organization. And what happened after everyone was sharing um, what you said about Michaela, this is way deeper here, the guru upset. Everyone started to open up and be vulnerable and share about their experience, what actually hurts them. And there's com comings for everyone, the healing in, even the ones that don't share. There is so much healing in everyone's world to move through to like, yeah, come to their upsets. Also like, yeah. Yeah, and what I feel when we open up, we are we feel all much closer to each other. Like we see each other then, and we like we really see each other and feel each other, and this is um, where we relate to each other. And for me, it was very helpful when Michaela opened up because it is an energy I am moving through as well. And when someone is so clearly in sharing, I can see um, I I receive so much from it because. Um, where I was a bit aware of it, I can see it then much more clearly and then I just can move through it because I do not have to sit in it any longer. And mm -hmm. I was also very relieved just in pointing this one out. It was like, oh my God, this was what I was asking for, God. It is, this is it. Yeah, thank you. Now we can <laughs> move through it. Yeah, very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you... The more that I've done this work, the more I think even Manuela touched on this. It's like if you think you're having an upset about something, it's never actually what you think the upset is. <laughs> and that has been really intense for me to ground into because there's been many times where I was like, I was upset about that one thing, but then when I actually go back and look at it, 
looking at it, I'm like, oh, I wasn't actually upset about the actual thing. There's a much deeper root there. And uh, having to fully take responsibility of that. I do want to touch on something that Chrissy says here. She says, most of us are created to be led. It is safe to honor that and surrender there. Following gurus will feel natural and easy because they have built trust through their consistency and presence. And I absolutely love that because that is one of the reasons why I still do this work and why I share it is because they continuously show up and show us how to do the work through all of the blocks and the upsets that they have moved through. They've been very vulnerable and open to sharing what they're moving through and showing us how to move through it with this work. And then we also get to see the um, just the rewards and the things that come through, the breakthroughs that come through from them doing that work too. So for me to have uh, gurus and leaders who literally walk the walk and not just talk it and fully be able to show us, that is something that really has uh, gained my trust and that consistency and knowing that I can depend on them to also do their inner work and to continue showing me how to go deeper in that space. Yeah, something that I love about uh, this community is how um, the vulnerability, like we're taught to, like it's safe to be vulnerable and very real, you know, because that's not very much like, that's not like, um, I'd say like praised in society. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a thing. Growing up, it always felt like um, if you were very vulnerable and, and like real, it was kind of, oh, this is too, in this community, like it's embraced, you know? So that's nice, you know, cause it's like, and it doesn't mean like, and I also like, you know, Jeff and Shalia teach us to, you know, grow our confidence and know that we're divine and walk around like, hey, we're divine. But that doesn't mean that, like, um, we shy away from like, being very, very vulnerable and real with people. So that's what I love about this community. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's even a deep one for the divine masculine. Usually for the divine masculine, it is, it is in society that you can never show yourself vulnerable and like here in this community you really have as a masculine this safe space where you can open yourself up and this is like for the masculine energy it's really like even more beautiful and it's really sad if you're a masculine and in the community and you see there's not so much masculines in the community so there's actually uh, a so such a safe place for the mans out there to like come in and open up but it's like yeah a huge gift like what we get there from Jeff and Shalia yeah yeah and I feel especially for Eve when in our journey it is the place where he was allowed to open up and where he was allowed to explore himself and really um when Eve made his first share about like uh him being autistic it was like this is who he is he um was so celebrated. I remember like everyone, yeah, we're so happy that you like just yeah, know know more about yourself. And yeah, I really love that too. This is this is so supportive and so um we are so loving. It yeah, unconditional love. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's really what it is. It's like a we're always asked to just come in and um, and the only thing that we're truly asked is to purify our consciousness and at the end of the day it is really what's in the highest good for not only ourselves and our union but those that are around us um, and when you purify your consciousness I have only ever experienced becoming more of my true authentic self that felt very far away or I knew that was possible, but I didn't really know how to reach that version of myself. And I really feel like this work is exactly the blueprint of how to do that. And you receive so much more than I think we realized we were, were gonna get. Like the investment has been um, given back like a hundredfold for me, <laughs> like, that's how I feel about it. Um, and so really it truly is 
by far the best investment I've ever made is allowing myself to go all in with this work and to truly receive God's gifts for me through this work. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm feeling really blessed and complete in this space. Yeah, and here is like the best example that the work works are um, Jason and Chrissy, which made the sermon like they're um, in the community from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you see the whole story from them where they are, yeah. like when they started with TFAS, where Jason was and where they are now. Mm -hmm. So that's like the perfect example how really it works when you have this deep relationship to Guru, what is possible. And that's like how much years they are in it right now. Yep. Yeah. So if you just look at Jason and Chrissy, when you imagine what can happen in their life as such um, really close to Guru, it's possible for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and what I feel with Jason and Chrissy when you watch Tifas, I mean, we, we know them from the beginning, so to speak, um, that this is just the process. We just need to move through the process. So it's just the process. And uh, Jeff and Julia give us the way and we just have to walk it and face our stuff, like the purification process you said before, Kanisha. And what I feel is um, that it just needs this huge willing willingness um, to be close to God, like to really be close to God and to really serve God. So when you have this, you can, like, I mean, you can move through every challenge. It's just focus on God and you will arrive um, at the, on the other side from every challenge you face. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, How's I, everyone feeling? I was going to say, I agree. Like, uh, being in the community, I feel like it's just, you have to be, have a willingness to want God more than anything else, any upset, any challenge, right? Cause you just, you know, you'll have the confidence to move through anything. Like as you go move through challenges and over them and then you keep going you'll build that confidence and you'll be like hey i can literally overcome anything so yeah that's what i want to say yeah what you touch on there really is that every upset that we have is with god at the core and when you allow yourself to just move through it again that shifts every area of your life with career with twin flame with your career life purpose with your finances it all shifts because at the core, it's one relationship with God. Well, does anyone have any last minute comments or anything that they want to share before we close here? Yeah, I want to share something because this is very close to my heart. We have like this, it's just a little thing, but we have this um, everyday ritual. Do you say this in English? Like when you, when you have a ritual, is this an English word? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, when when we eat lunch or dinner, and we are just saying thank you, God, for something, and it is usually Jeff and Julia. Like we we just oh, thank cool. the family every day for Jeff and Julia and the work. And yeah, it is like you can really have um, cult or like you you can um, just have this relationship in your heart and uh, this gratitude you feel for them, and there's this closeness to Guru. And yeah, we, we just say what you want to say. Yeah, that um, I am very grateful that our whole family is like having this relationship. This is what I want to say that we are like close with Jeff and Julia and close with the family as one. And yeah, this it fulfills my heart every day. And we just be thankful. Yeah, I love that. Yes, yeah, so, so sweet. I love that. And that's for everyone. Everyone can have that that closeness with their gurus and that their family has that too. Like I think that that is really going to be a solid foundation of a thriving harmonious union is that um, everyone, including your children, have a relationship with guru and um, ultimately they will choose to align in those spaces with you. That feels really good when you have all that you're, all the people that you're close with in your home choosing with you and choosing oneness and love in that space. And you're really cultivating something beautiful there. 
that's a that's really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Mm. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us for after church tea time, and thank you all for being here with me. Um, definitely for those who are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can receive more of these in the future. And we look forward to.